بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب زدني علما Okay so now in this section we'll try to understand about the next generation firewalls as well as we'll try to quickly see some theoretical concepts like the history as well UTM and also we'll try to see some of the features of the next generation firewalls also the acquisitions like how the Cisco entered into the firewall market and also we'll see the different platforms and the features of the Cisco firepower So before we go ahead with that we need to understand a little bit of history about the next generation firewalls. Now earlier we used to have something called a unified threat management. Now now UTM next generation firewalls they are they are kind of interchangeable terms. Okay but initially we we used to call it as next gen UTM and and this next generation firewall is a kind of a more kind of a marketing term used to promote the current generation firewalls so let's try to get into that now utm refers to a single security solution like a single device which is going to provide a multiple security functions at one point of your network now if you now why there is a need for the utm if you if you go back earlier days earlier we used to have a separate devices for separate functionalities like you want to implement some uh, different features like let's say you want to implement a stateful packet inspection uh, or the stateless packet inspection or writing any ecls you you generally have a dedicated firewall which is more uh, responsible for that but again if you if you want that particular device also need to terminate the vpn connections let's say that is also connecting to your your external external network where you have a remote vpns or the site to site vpns need to be implemented so you used to have something called vpn concentrators or vpn devices so there are separate dedicated devices used for that likewise you 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 have a separate antivirus or anti spam uh, anti spam engines or separate devices or even you have a separate device for called ips ips device again for detecting the malware and other things any kind of suspicious traffic so we used to have a separate devices so so as their threats increases because normally uh, there are, there are many cyber threats evolved to meet the new challenges and as more and more threats are been evolved the industry requires a new type of appliances and the industry requires some services that's going to meet that particular challenge so the traditional stateful packet inspection firewall let's say if i'm using just a firewall which will do my simple uh, stateful packet inspection or stateless packet inspection that is not going to be sufficient so that's not going to meet the 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 scalability or the requirement of the growing business as well as the different threats evolve, evolving in your network So now uh, many organizations deployed multiple devices with the different roles like i said earlier we used to have a separate uh, dedicated device for firewall for stateful packet inspection and also you have a web proxy device which is going to do a uh, web filtering or web proxy or filtering kind of thing for filtering your web traffic or filtering your urls you have a separate device for that or even there is a separate device for ips Now the ips is again deployed to detect and block some kind of malicious traffic or even you need uh, something called email filtering uh, which is which is required to filter any kind of junk emails or any kind of phishing attacks or phishing emails uh, which are more kind of email based uh, threats because you may want to filter or block unwanted emails like spams or email email based threats or even you need to have a vpn servers or a vpn concentrators which are required for the remote branch offices to connect as well as you require some antivirus or anti malware or anti spyware services which can run parallelly to prevent the attacks and also you require the device which which should also be able to do routing as well because uh, you need to make sure that you have reachability so so as 
the requirement uh, of the different security roles have changed. Now they have come up with something called UTM approach. Now with UTM, now that this is a new approach. Now in the new approach, we, we, we just combine all, almost not all, almost all the features because the features will vary based on different vendors. So we are going to uh, reduce the complexity instead of using a separate devices for each and every security service. We are going to use a unified approach where you combine all the features into one single hardware. So which is going to, um, which is going to support multiple products and the features will vary based on different vendors. So I'm not getting into vendor specific. This is kind of common uh, concept. We need to know when it comes to the firewalls, whether you are using any vendor. So now this new appliance usually uh, include almost all the functions what you used to have on separate device. Now you can have this for the VPN. You can set up the VPN on this like most firewalls in today's network do support that. And also they do the firewalling job, like your stateful, stateless packet inspection, even they support the IPS for intrusion detection and prevention. And even you can do some kind of data loss prevention kind of thing, or even you can configure the NAT, you can configure the VPNs, you can configure the routing, or uh, even in today's, uh, today's even the, the specific devices or the firewalls, they do support antivirus or anti-spam uh, features as well. So these UTM devices, uh, it's like they, they started gaining popularity since 2019, partly because of the all-in-one approach, which is going to simplify the installation, simplify the configuration, as well as simplify the maintenance. So, all, so it makes all the network administrators can manage or centrally manage all the security defenses from, from one single device. So if we talk about prominent uh, UTM brands like Cisco, Fortinet, Sophos, Netgear, uh, SonicWall, Checkpoint, they all, uh, generally we call them as UTMs, but in today's uh, network, we call them as next generation firewalls. So basically next generation firewalls is like, uh, like a term which is used to define the current generation of the firewalls. Like in today's network, we generally call it as next generation firewall. Again, now again, earlier, they, some people used to call UTM, some people call as next generation firewall. Now, now everyone, now whatever the firewall we, you see vendor, mostly they all say our firewall is like next generation firewall. So again, it is a kind of a marketing term we can say, uh, which is uh, used to boost up the sales and there is no uh, it's a kind of single device okay you will see you will also see the term utm unified threat management to describe uh, which is going to be essentially the same thing okay or uh, in, in sometimes you you see some people say you know utm there are some additional features added which makes a next generation firewall Okay, so, so in today's network, we call it as a next generation firewall. It's a term again introduced by Gartner around 2004. So there's no much difference between the UTM or next generation firewall. So same technologies, same capabilities. It's a kind of a marketing term, as I said, to promote the, the firewalls. And again, the Cisco joined this market in 2013 with multiple acquisitions. So Cisco acquired multiple companies, multiple security organizations to, to provide the next generation firewall features. We'll talk about that in a separate uh, section, separate uh, class, probably we'll, we'll also see what are the different acquisitions Cisco did to enter into the uh, firewall market.